Hey guys, this is Dr. Risho. I'm here with Matt, who's had some really good results after a couple speed bumps, a couple ups and downs. And um, I'm really happy to say Matt is is doing very well. And uh, again, we had an up and down. So, you know, Matt, do you want to tell people some of the <laughs> roller coaster that you just went through? Sure. Yeah. You know, it's, it's been it's been a bit a bit of a journey. I, I think I've been working with you for about a year now, and uh, what's what's kind of happened is is as we've discussed different treatments and and different you know, did some initial lab testing to find out what could be going on. We, we decided on a few different approaches. And once we get going, often what I would find is things would work and, and I'd see improvement and I'd get really excited. And then... And, and improvements in, just to give people some context, inflammatory bowel disease, it was kind of indeterminate in terms of what type and some mm -hmm. of the, you know, the bowel frequency and urgency and, and digestive distress were the symptoms that you were... Uh, plagued with and, and I mean to a certain point where they were even interfering with your job which is what made me you know, feel for your case so much which was you had just taken this new job you were excited about it and then you know the GI symptoms were potentially going to hinder your ability to, to do this job that you really like. Exactly and it's tricky to make you know life decisions on based on kind of how your symptoms are doing at, at, a, at a certain point so when when you're doing well you want to bank on, on keeping them well but you know I've learned uh, through life experience now that it's not necessarily going to always be that way, but it, it's also important to kind of not lose your sense of direction and purpose and, you know, keep, keep going the way, the way that uh, things are kind of laid out for you because it's easy. You know, I found once you, once you've had that progress and start regressing a bit to panic, you know, and, and think that, that what you had was was useless and and <laughs> not going to do anything, and um, I'm glad I'm glad I was able to check in with you during those times so I didn't completely lose my mind. Yeah. Um, let's let's expand upon that just just for a yeah. minute. Yeah, sure. So essentially, we had started off with some kind of preliminary therapies, but where we really broke things open and saw you improve nicely was really the course of herbal antimicrobials, and right. you went from zero to sixty in terms of healing in like a few days maybe a week or so yeah and, and I was super happy for you. you you looked healthier when when we checked in your symptoms were all gone and, and you were just ready to pull ahead in your life I was super happy for you uh, yeah. then you know, a few weeks later a month or a few months later you yeah. started to regress and yeah I finished I, I finished the two months of the antimicrobials and was feeling pretty good for a couple for a couple weeks and then quickly started to regress and was really discouraged obviously when that was happening and then I think even more discouraged when we said, okay, well, this antimicrobial therapy has been helpful, but maybe we need a little bit more of that stimulus to maintain you in this remission. So we did the antimicrobial treatment again. And right. Which I was very on. excited to do because, yeah. again, this is something exactly. that helped so much and I'd finished my two-month course. And it's like, all right, you know, give me the stuff that, that works again. And then the second time it didn't really work. And, yeah. and I think that was kind of this – kicking a man when he's down an experience for you where you had such high hopes for this therapy that got you to this plateau and then yeah. it didn't deliver. And, and so for the, for the patients and for the clinicians listening, don't be disheartened if, if that happens. You know, there, there's a good therapeutic tool in the natural medicine toolkit that we can apply to inflammatory bowel disease. And so what we did in your case was we used a short course on the elemental diet, which is some pretty impressive documentation for IVD. And we paired that with this gut healing compound known as SBI, which uh, can help with binding toxins in the gut and restoration of the gut barrier. And those two things have gotten you back to your previous plateau. In fact, it sounds like you were, when I say plateau, your peak level of plateau. And it sounds like you're actually even a bit better than you were at your previous peak. Yeah. And we, we've talked about this before as kind of like a, an upward trend of a stock market chart where, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's progressing up, but if you if you look at you know the long term picture, um, there's always some dips in there, and yeah, kind of, exactly. Yeah. And so I, I definitely you know kind of entered entered a valley <laughs> not too long ago, but now we're we're back climbing up the mountain and and doing well. And and as we were discussing earlier, it's it's so important to not only keep keep a level of mind about these things, but also um, your confidence builds once you get more tools in your tool chest to, to work on, on these types of things and know that certain things do work and, and you just, sometimes you just have to give them time. And sometimes you just have to have the patience um, to get through those, those rough patches. 
Um, it's because it's so easy when you're in one of those rough patches to to think that you know you're never going to get back to where you were. But as as long as you you continue to think about that progress that you're making and work towards it, um, I'm grateful that I was able to keep a level head with that and get to that point. Yeah, I, I am as well. And and you've also been able to move away from some of the drug therapy, which I, I'm not philosophically opposed to, but uh, you know, certainly if we can find a natural and especially a nutritional based intervention for these things rather than the drug therapy, like prednisone, you were using prednisone to call your flares and that doesn't come without a cost. And you were aware of that. And you know, we were both aware of that. And so we're really trying to say, okay, we know the prednisone works, but it's doing other right. damage. Uh, and so what other options? Do we have? Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm realistic about that too. I, I really try not to use those drugs, but I do, you know, it's like the in case of emergency break glass, you know, right. I've got <laughs> my, my, I'm not going to break the medicine cabinet glass, but it's in there. Um, and even, you know, even when things were really bad and I was, I was really struggling to get to work. Um, I, I, I was able to hold off because I just, I, I wanted to, but you, you always want to weigh that because I also knew I wanted to get out of this far because you're not, you're not getting any healing done, you know, while that's, that's kind of happening. And I was able to discover first time trying an elemental diet that after four days of that, um, I was having the same improvement that I would have if I'd been taking 40 milligrams of prednisone. And, and some of the research literature corroborates that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's nice that, you know, we have these different options. And again, not saying that you should not use medicines or medicines are better or worse, but let's start with the least invasive, uh, essentially a hypoallergenic meal replacement nutritional shake compared mm -hmm. to prednisone. Now, which one makes more sense pragmatically to start with? And of course, it'd be the nutritional sort of Yep. Yeah, so you, you've done fantastic. Your, your digestive symptoms have gotten better globally. The other thing I just want to mention really quick for people is your fatigue and brain fog also got better, which just illustrates the profound gut-to-brain connection. Anything there you want to chime in on? Yeah, and, you, and that's the type of thing where it's it's hard to when you when you talk about dealing with with digestive symptoms like this and you say oh it's difficult to leave the house or go to work and those things it's not just because of the an anxiety of you know having to urgently use the restroom it's the fact that you are tired because when your immune system is is working its tail off to to try to heal yourself constantly you know on twenty four seven basis it's going to sap a ton of energy so you just don't. Not, so not only are you dealing with the stress of going outside, you just don't have the energy to do those things, mm -hmm. and it affects your, your, the clarity of your mind as well, which is you know why, in my mindset, like I, I wouldn't have even considered taking this, this more high-intensity job that I did for the summer um, if I hadn't you know, had that improvement before, and I'm so glad I did do that, even though I did have you know, a brief rough patch in the middle of that job, and that was a rough time, but it, in the grand scheme of things, it was, it was short-lived. You know, it feels like a long time when you're in the thick of it, but um, I, after I'm, doing that, I'm glad that you did take that job because that really gave you something to motivate you to get back to being well as fast as you could. Like, it kind of gave you no yeah. to put things off. It was like, yep, got to take care of this right away. Exactly. And, and I know it's different for different people, but I, for, for me personally, I've had that before where, uh, the previous summer, cause I work at a, I work at a school primarily. So I get fortunate enough to get summers off. Um, and so last summer I, you know, it's just going to take some time to, to just relax a bit and try different things. And man, I just, I kind of regress because I didn't, at least for myself, I didn't have the motivation to like have something to work towards. I was just kind of sitting around hoping things were going to get better. Yeah. Um, so having, it was it was tricky, you know, balancing the stress of it, of this job. But for, for me, at least, that was a motivation to to really buckle down because, you know, the the hard thing is the worse you're feeling, the more energy it takes to try to try to get better, and that's when you're at your least en amount of energy that you have to work with. So you know, it's that that cycle's kind of or you know that direction's kind of working away from you. But if you can find it in yourself to any, when you're at that low point to actively think about how you can work to get yourself better as soon as you start seeing a little bit of progress that's going to be enough spur and motivation to propel you forward that's what's having, that external, having that external motivator to make sure you don't just kind of tip into i guess this this illness induced um despondence is, is, is very helpful so yeah which is very common you know well my man you've done great i'm, I'm really happy to hear that you're you're um stable and stable at a level of improvement I don't think you've achieved historically 
and we'll continue to check in periodically. You know, do I expect, and maybe I should share this also, do I expect you're never going to have a little bit of a regression? No, you know, you, you probably will at some point. And the analogy I used earlier in our visit was like someone who pulls a hamstring, maybe in college, will they ever have an ache in that hamstring again? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll take some time and they'll heal, they'll do some stretching, they'll do some therapy, they'll do some foam rolling, and their hamstring will probably be solid, like your gut is right now. But right. if you know, enough time goes by and their exercise routine gets a little unbalanced or they're sitting too much or, or what have you, could that hamstring start to flare up a little bit again? Yeah. And would it be a big deal to have to do some more stretching and PT and foam rolling and whatever? No. And so in your case, maybe once in a while you have to do a little short you know, day or two on an elemental diet to calm things down. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And now, you know, when that does happen, I now have the knowledge and the tools to kind of know what to do, or at least an approach of things to try and, and something to work through rather than just having an oh crap moment. What do I do? <laughs> Get it <in> on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well said. Well, thank you, Matt, for, for sharing. Anything else you want to say in close? You know, I think, I think, you know, especially for somebody who's been in the same boat as me where you may be going through that rough patch and you're just searching for any type of uh, inspiration to keep you going. I mean, like, I'm just here to say, you know, keep with it, keep trying, um, because you're not alone. A lot of people have dealt with this and, and I've seen it firsthand and I've uh, been fortunate enough to kind of learn that advice of, of sticking with it and keep, keep educating yourself, keep learning. And um, good things happen as a result. Awesome. Awesome. That's a great closing point. So thank you again, Matt, for yeah. sharing that with us. And congratulations on your newfound health. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.